Hello everyone and welcome to the lab. Today we're going to be taking a look at this RC6502 single board computer which is a replica of the original Apple I computer originally produced by Steve Wozniak and marketed by Steve Jobs I think back in the 70s at some point probably around 1975-1976 somewhere around there. Um, and the cool thing about this is it's all on one single board so it's very easy to assemble uh, as you can see, I've already assembled this um, because I started this project before I started this channel, so I didn't uh, film myself soldering any of these sockets on or anything like that. But we'll still take a look at this on the bench, and we'll also do some soldering. We'll attach these pin headers to this Arduino Nano, which will then slot into this bottom part of the um, single board computer. And the reason we want to do that is because this single board computer doesn't actually have any kind of input output. It doesn't have a VDU, doesn't have any way to drive a display. So the only way you can communicate with it is over the serial port from the USB connection on the Arduino Nano. So that's what this is for. Um, it's not an AVR machine. It's not using the AVR processor to do anything except drive the serial connection. Um, so we'll do that and then we'll test it out. We'll run some classic Apple One software, if there is any, or at least run some integer basic programs, which should work fine. And then um, we'll see about what we can do in future with this machine. Perhaps we can uh, make a VDU for it or make some other peripherals for it and see just how far we can push this RC6502 single board computer. So let's go to the bench and we'll take a closer look at this machine. Okay, so before we take a look at the machine, let's just quickly solder on those headers onto the Arduino Nano. So as I'm doing this soldering, I realized after putting solder into the first hole that there was no pin there. And that's because I had put the pins off by one um, into the holes. So I had to first get out the desoldering wick and um, remove the solder that I had just put in, which was annoyingly stubborn. And then uh, once I've done that, then I'll be able to put the pins in the right way around um, lining them all up correctly with the, with the holes and then filling each of those holes with solder. Now, I, I know that a lot of people have very strong opinions about soldering technique and my soldering technique certainly is not the best. I know I tend to over solder more than under solder, but I don't invite comments about my soldering technique. I will get better with, at it over time naturally as I get more practice and I really don't need people to critique it from the comments section. So I know my soldering isn't the best in the world, but please just bear with me. I know it works. It's going to work for me. It'll be fine. So now we're just a matter of getting all of these, um, all of this solder into the correct locations. And um, I'll leave a list in the comments or in the description section below um, of all of the tools that I'm using. So if you're interested in setting up your own setup, you can know what I use and what I find useful. Um, but one of the things that I would very much stress is that if you're going to get into doing soldering or that sort of thing, um, make sure you use a well-ventilated and well-lit environment. It, otherwise, it can be a lot of strain on your eyes and on your lungs. So be careful of that. Okay, so we've just about finished soldering on these headers now. And then after we've soldered on the headers, we'll actually take a look at the board itself. Okay, so here is the 6502 classic processor that was used in so many computers. Um, most notably though, the Apple 1 and 2, the um, VIC-20 and several others. Um, we have the PIA here, the MC6821. We have, um, I believe this one is the ROM and this one is the RAM. Could be the other way around, but um, either way. Ah, yes, actually, in fact, this one is the ROM, I think, and this one is the RAM, because this has the RAM enable jumper right here. Um, then we have some logic chips here. Um, the Arduino will go in here, and I'll put that in in a moment. Um, we have the clock over here and the clock chip here. So, in general, it's a very simple um, single board computer, and we have this nice um, general I.O. ports here at the, back, at the bottom that we can use to connect it to a 
breakout board or um, a back plate. So let's put in the Arduino. Actually, hold on. Let me just make sure I know which way it's supposed to go. In fact, I don't know which way it's supposed to go. Although I would guess that the USB port is supposed to face outwards. Yep, I was right. The USB port goes outwards. So let's just slot that in. There we go. And I realized I should probably just clean off a little bit of that flux residue. Whoops, I just bumped the camera. Sorry about that. I'll clean off a little bit of that flux residue with some IPA. Let me just get some Q-tips to do that. Just uh, put some IPA on there. It will shred the Q-tip a little bit, but Mostly it's just to apply the IPA and then I will just use a brush to get rid of any of the cotton residue there. And it seems to have cleared up the flux nicely. Okay, here we have the 6502 machine now with the Arduino installed. So the only thing left to do now is to install the jumpers to enable the various chips here, 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 and so on. Um, I'm back now with my jumpers, so now let's put them in and then we can give this a test. So, let's just empty out the bag here. That one run, running off. Okay, so we want to put in the jumper to enable powering off the USB connection. Let me just put that one on. And then we want the one to enable the ROM, which I believe goes this way. The third pin is just if you want to turn it off, you have a pin to put it on. So I think it's this way is on. Should be around that way. Get on there. There we go. And to enable the RAM, same story. I'm assuming that this is on position. Then let's see here, what else do we have to enable the oscillator? Which I'm pretty sure we want to enable. Come on. There we go. What's this VP ground? Does it say anything about it here? No, it doesn't say. Well, in any event, we definitely want to enable the PIA. So that goes here. Oh, it's being tough, this one. Let's try. There we go. Ouch. That got it. Um, oh, and there's these two jumpers here, A14 and A13. I believe on the back it says something about those. Um, if I remember correctly, there was something that A14 and A13 did. Right, it depends on the EEPROM chip that we're using. So for the, is this the 64 or the 256? It can't really quite read that. There, maybe I can see it on the camera. Yes, I can. Oh, it is the 256. You can see that just faintly there. Just faintly here, we can see it. It says AT28C256 which is correct. So that requires me to short the right hand pair, which I assume is with the board facing this way with the text in the right direction. So I'll short the right hand pair here. And here.
I don't believe I need to program the ROMs because I think they've already came programmed. So I think that's it. That's all the jumpers we need. Um, oh, I was going to check VP ground as well. If it's an original MOS 6502, which it is, then I should leave this open. Right, so this is to allow us to use 65CO2. Um, we can leave bin one of the CPU floating um, if it's shorted. But if it's open, then VP is ground and it should work for the regular 6502 chips. So this is a regular 6502 chip, so I think we leave that one as is. Okay, so now I just need to program the Arduino and then we can give this a test and see if it works. So firstly, if I just quickly take a look in my devices, these are all the TTY devices that I currently have. And if I plug in the Arduino, then we'll see, but I think I should get another one. Let's see here. Yes, here we are. TTY.USBSerial110. That's probably the device I should use to program my Arduino. So let me just edit the make file here. We'll set the port to be dev TTY USB serial 110. I'll leave all the other settings the same. Um, now we should be able to compile it. Oh, I've already compiled it, right? And now I can hopefully use AVR Dude to flash the Arduino. Okay. It seems like something's happened. So as you can see, it uh, seems to be working. And now we want to test it out. So let's try hooking screen up to our serial port with this board rate, which should be fine. And we get garbage. Okay, that's not ideal. Let's try and figure out what's going wrong. All right, well, that'll teach me. I think I know what the problem is. Um, I should have read the web page more carefully. It seems like these jumpers being in the lower position is actually off. So it's actually disabling all of these chips. So let's try moving them to the correct positions and then we'll see if anything changes. Let's take that off. Let's move it up. Take that one off. Put it up. Enable the RAM. And take that one off. Place it up to enable the ROM. Without those enabled, I imagine the CPU would be pretty lost. Um, I think everything else is fine. And I did notice that the CPU was getting a little bit warm when it was attached to power. Um, not dangerously warm at all, it seems to, but it does seem to be doing something, at least getting power. So uh, that much is working. And I did see the LED come up, as you would have seen in the brief shot I showed you. So I think switching those jumpers around is all we need to do. So now let's plug it back in and see what happens. And now I think I can just connect with screen and it should get me into the Wozmon, the Steve Wozniak's original monitor program. So let's do that. And I noticed that I, the board rate I was using was a bit wrong. So I, I fixed that according to what I can find online, it should be 115,200. So let's try that. Okay, we get this exclamation point. I believe if I put in some addresses here, let's just put in some random hex numbers. Yes, this looks like a monitor. So it does appear to be running. That's really cool. Now I need to figure out how I can start basic. I don't know how to do that on the Apple one. I only know how to do that on the Apple two. So let me find that out and then I'll come back. Okay, so I switched um, my terminal program to use Zoc instead of screen. 
because um, it makes it a bit easier to send files because now that we can start basic, which I've realized is at E000, that's the address, and I type R to tell it to run from that address. So now we get into a basic prompt, so we can do our usual things. Of course, 10 print the microprofessor. And 20, go to 10. And we type run. And there we go. I'll press the reset button here on the machine to get out of that. We're back in the monitor. So the next thing I want to try is um, some basic programs that have been written many years ago now for the Apple One, because this is, after all, an Apple One compatible machine. We're running Wasmon at the moment, and if I start basic again, let's just do that. We should be able to now um, send a text file. I'll just go and do that. Star Trek. It's a very famous game. Sending now. Let's hope that works. Oh, no. We're getting syntax errors on some of the longer lines, it seems. Or well, something's going wrong in any event. What a shame. So, yes, even though it's still transferring, I don't think this is going to work because... Hold on. If I look at the listing, we've got a lot of the stuff there, but I don't think it's properly complete. Well, let's just see what happens. I did see syntax errors, though, so I really don't think this is going to work. Um, let's go easiest, because I am a, really a novice at this game. And there we go. There's, a, there's some sort of problem. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Um, and I also, I think this might also happen with other basic programs. So if I just reset the machine and try it again, uh, and then send the text file, let's um, try Hammurabi, which is also a popular basic game. Let's see if this one, yep, there's also syntax errors coming out. So I'm not sure why this is happening. It's like it's got parts of lines that are just being cut off or, or sent out of order. It's very strange. And of course this doesn't work either, no. Yes, that's very strange. I'm not sure what to do about that. So if anyone has any comments about what's going wrong here and why Hammurabi and um, Star Trek aren't working, I'd like to know. But um, another thing we can try is micro chess. Uh, let me just reset the machine again. So this is, in fact, an assembly language game. So we'll just load it in from a text dump of the uh, machine code. This is micro chess, very old chess game. We'll just transfer that over. And as you can see, it's just loading in the machine code um, directly into the Wasmon. Okay, that's been sent over. Now it's at 0300, so if I run it there, Welcome to Micro Chess by Peter Jennings. So um, let's play normal. And I guess we'll do a random opening. So the Notation of micro chess is rather complicated and I don't really understand it. But essentially each cell is allocated an octal number and it gives you this very cryptic encoding of the chess state. Um, but it's probably the first, I think it was the first chess game ever made. So we can cut it a bit of slack there. Anyway, I don't know how to get out of it now. So <laughs> I will just reset my computer to exit there. And there's one other game that I downloaded that I have no idea if it works or not, but let's just give it a try. So let's just try sending over uh, Lunar Lander. It's a bunch more assembly code, or machine language rather, also at 0300. 
Okay, to control lunar module, begin landing procedure. Okay, so it gives me, oh wow, it's okay. So unlike the regular Lunar Lander arcade game, this is just giving me the statistics. So we have the current time, the height off the uh, ground, the current velocity and the amount of fuel we have. How much should we burn? Well, let's just try burning like 10. So we burn 10 units and it reduced our velocity by five. We still got five, 455 feet to go. I think we should burn a bit more. So let's try burning 40. Burn out of range, okay? Let's try burning 20. Um, okay, our velocity is going down, but we, we really just want to gracefully and slowly just burn 10 again. Burn one. Okay, we're starting to increase velocity again, burn five, burn 10, burn 10, burn five. We can just keep burning five. We'll burn four now as we gracefully descend. We've got Okay, we landed on the moon uh, too fast, it seems. Hmm, that's actually quite tricky. It's a little bit of strategy involved. That's the first time I've ever played a game on an Apple One, so there you go. That's very cool. It's actually quite fun, actually. Okay, that's going to conclude our look, for today at least, at the RC6502 single board computer. It was a lot of fun visiting all that ancient software and trying to get some of it working. If anyone has any ideas how I can um, get that those basic programs to run, um, why it seems to be sending those lines in out of order uh, or something, I'm not sure, exactly sure what's going on there, um, please do let me know. I'm pretty sure I could get them working by manually typing them out, just like we did in the old days from magazines, but I'd really rather not do that. So. Um, if anyone has any good suggestions on how I can fix that, please do write a comment in the comment section below. Um, if you have any other comments, please do also feel free to make them in the comment section below. I'm, I'll be active in the comment section and happy to read them. If you like the video, please leave a like. And uh, as always, if you want to see more, subscribe to the channel. Um, in the future for this board, I'm hoping to uh, build the backplate for it and then connect a VDU and hopefully some other exciting peripherals. And we'll see just how much of a complete computer we can make out of this Apple One. Maybe we can even make a wooden case, although I'm not promising anything. All right, that'll be it. So I'll see you next time.